uh, Jeff got bit by a shark. So it was a, it was a reef shark of some sort that uh, I guess didn't want to give up. Big day today. We're going to the Ragged's. Gonna go off grid for a bit. There's gonna be, I think, a lot of kid boats. We're gonna go fishing um, and uh, get away from the Exuma madness. This season has been really, really fun, but it's been very crowded. Tons of mega yachts, tons of boats, um, and we're gonna go off grid for a bit. Kat had been interested in going to the Ragged Islands. I found the idea of going to the Ragged's by ourselves with just the two of us and Maddie to be not particularly appealing uh, because it seemed like a long way to go to a very remote place to just take Maddie to the beach every day, which is basically all we were doing up to that point. But then we ran into Jeff and Rachel and Stella from Slacker. We saw them on Volleyball Beach at Chat and Chill in Georgetown and they said, hey, uh, there's a gang of us going down to the Ragged Islands tomorrow. You want to come? And we the boat was already fueled up and watered up. We had plenty of provisions, so there wasn't really any good reason to say no. And it sounded like a pretty great opportunity to, to go with a bunch of kid boats. So yeah, that next day we headed off to, uh, to the Ragged Island. We left Georgetown to go to the Ragged Islands, and for us, the six-foot draft, that meant we had to go the long way via Long Island over one day, the next day over to the very north end of the, the Ragged Islands. up with all of them in Flamingo Key, so that's when we met with Slacker, Everyday Saturday, Exodus, Eco, and Rolling Stones, all but Slacker being catamarans. We are in Flamingo Key right now. This is supposed to be where the hogfish are. We've never had a hogfish before. Um, so that's what I want for dinner. Kind of had a great day. Um, just the water here is insane. It's so clear, it's so beautiful. Will's going with the boys. Try to get some fish. It's nap time, so I'm going with Maddie. Hopefully I'll get to go later. And yeah, we're just, ah, it's so, so beautiful here. So all the boats that we met up with, um, everybody was pretty keen on spearing, or at least several people from each boat were. So every day we were going on at least one spear fishing expedition uh, with anywhere between six and the better part of 20 people uh, on a whole bunch of dinghies. Daddy's here, Maddie. Oh. Let's see what Daddy got for oh. us. Oh, amazing! Touch, yeah. Touch, touch, touch. Yeah, I'll bring it up on deck and you can touch it. How many did you get? Uh, um. Just two. Um, the other one's pretty small. Oh, there is a shark right under you. Yeah, you didn't waste any time. No. That. There's two sharks. One, two sharks followed daddy home. Whoa. Can you see it, honey? You are um, just getting circled. What kind of shark is that? Wait. What kind of shark? That is definitely not a reef shark. He is right there. Please be careful. Uh, yeah.
basically, this applies to most of the places that I've spearfished in the Bahamas, but certainly in the Ragged Islands, we saw sharks basically every time we went spearfishing. And right or wrong, we got pretty comfortable with that dynamic, or I got fairly comfortable with it. I was used to seeing reef sharks and black tip sharks around. I wouldn't spear a fish directly in front of one's nose, but I also wasn't gonna get out of the water just because I saw one and I'm, I'm not gonna stop the hunt necessarily. So once they'd swim away, um, I, I felt perfectly comfortable shooting a fish and trying to get it up and out of the water and over to a dinghy pretty quickly. Uh, but yeah, I just got pretty, pretty blase about the reef and black tips. Just heard over the radio that there has been a shark bite. All right, shark attack story time. Several days into our trip to the Raggeds, a big group of us decided we'd go on a spearfishing expedition between um, Nurse Key and Little Nurse Key in Nurse Key Channel. The group of boats was anchored a couple miles south of there at Buena Vista Key. So it was just a 10 or 15 minute dinghy ride from the boats up to the, the channel that we were interested in hunting. So we had a lot of us and we went out to Nurse Channel. So we moved away from the dinghies and we kept going along the wall. Never, never saw anything, just kept going along, going along, going along. So then when we were heading back, we saw a hogfish. And of course I was after the hogfish. And as soon, like every time I had the thought, this is I should probably stop and turn around, the hogfish would stop. So I thought, well, I'll just keep on going and see if I can't get this thing maybe one or two more times of the pattern of the fish swimming away, me trying to catch up and then thinking I should turn around and then it would stop. And I do remember eventually thinking, all right, this is, I'm too far away. I need to turn around. So the last time I thought, all right, I need to turn around. The fish had swam up right into some fan coral, which is what they like to feed in. And I thought, great, I, you know, I'm gonna be able to get a shot on this thing and get back. And so I loaded up the spear, I had a, um, like a single point with a flopper on it. And I got a shot on it right behind the gills. And he moved right at the last second and went all the way through the fish, but the fly, it came right back out. Like the flopper did not engage at all. So the fish did its little shake of death and just darted over maybe 10 feet away from me. And I had a really good breath and the fish went 10 feet away and stopped and was still just sitting there hiding or whatever, but I had plenty of breath for a second shot. So I swam over, took the second shot on it, got it right behind the gills, he's on the spear, good to go. So immediately grabbed the fish, put my hand in its gills and put it right here on my chest like we always do, or we always did, and um, swam up to the surface and thought, or I think I saw the dinghies and remember thinking, crap, I am far away from the dinghies. I've got a long haul with this dead fish. We were, almost all of us were getting back into the anchored dinghies and starting to pull off our gear, starting to raise anchors, get motors started. And we knew Jeff was the last man in the water. He was at least a couple hundred yards away. We could see that he was still swimming away. So we figured he must be chasing a, a nice hogfish down. So got up to the surface, started swimming back towards the dinghies with my back up and out of the corner of my eye saw movement going around down where I had killed the fish and saw, I think two sharks, maybe three. Again, I don't remember. They were circling where the fish had been. So I thought, all right, I don't want to go crazy or anything like that, but I need to get back to the boat. So I rolled over on my back so I could like backstroke it and kick and watch what's going on behind me. Still have the fish up on my chest. Um, kick back, kick back, maybe, I don't know, 10 or 15 feet or so. And one of the black tips started to come my way, but was still on the bottom. And we were in maybe 20 feet of water, not too much. Um, so I'm kicking back, it's coming my way. And at that point, I remember he starts to come up off the bottom and is angling right for where I am at the time. I remember thinking maybe I should get the fish out of the water because that's what we used to do. So I held the fish up over my head 
um, while I was kicking, hoping maybe it wouldn't smell it. Of course, I was stupid because I smelled like dead fish. Also, aside, I used to always wear the exact same rash guard to fish in. I never washed it. When I got back to the boat, I would just take it off and hang it on the rails and let the sun do whatever it did with it. So I don't know how many fish I'd carried right here on my rash guard while they bled all over it, probably. Um, it's continuing to come in my direction. At that point, I remember thinking, maybe I should spear the shark. It was a brand new spear. I really liked the spear. And I thought, well, if I spear the shark, it might get stuck in the shark and I might lose the spear. And I probably thought that in like a millisecond. And then I thought, well, I don't care if I lose the spear. Maybe I should just try to spear the shark. Um, and by the time I was able to have all those thoughts and get the spear down and pointed towards the shark, it was, had closed the distance. It was closer than seven feet. So there was nothing. The spear was no good at that point. I remember it came up to my right side and I tried the punch in the nose thing like you're supposed to do. Um, and I, I remember pushing with my right hand and I guess I had my spear in the right hand. So I kind of pushed away with that one and tried to punch with the left hand. Um, that didn't seem to do anything. I was hoping it would just turn around and say that's enough. That didn't do anything. Um, and then it, uh, it kind of like I got it away from me but then it came right back into me. I tried to push it away again, and it kept coming back in me. And at that point, I guess, I thought, well, I can't get this shark to go leave me alone, so I need help. So I turned around and looked at the dinghies and went to shout for help, and I kind of kicked up as hard as I could, so my body went out of the water and was doing my hands like this, shouting, you know, help, I need help. And I may have shouted shark, I don't know what I was shouting. I started to see him, he went down and then came back up and then went down and then started splashing pretty frantically. And then I think within a couple moments started yelling help. And so at this point we're trying to get the anchor up as quickly as possible. We don't know what the hell's going on, but we know something's going on. I remember seeing folks were getting back into the dinghies and they were probably looking at me like, what in the world is he doing? Um, and I do remember, I did that maybe twice. I would, I would go up and then come down and then the shark would be there and it, it, um, it would bump into me. It, it never, I never got like grabbed by the shark. It, uh, it, was just, it just felt like it was like nosing me or like rubbing me. You know, that skin is really abrasive, the shark skin, so you could, I could feel it like on my arm. And I remember thinking, they're still really far away and I don't even know if they know what's going on. I went back down into the water and then literally the next thing I knew was I got hit in the head by a dinghy. We see that the Rolling Stones dinghy, who's already up and moving, they just spotted Jeff and beelined over to him within a few seconds of him yelling help and tossed him into the boat. My name is Charlotte. Hi, my name is Balin. Hi, my name is Walker. We, we got a boat called the Rolling Stones. We were fishing in the ragged with Slacker and with a, and with a whole bunch of other people. And then we packed up and got ready to leave to our boat. Then we saw a big splash. At first we thought it was a big fish, then we realized it was a shark. We went over there to help him. Dad pulled him into the dam. We are so glad he is okay. I guess they were coming in and um, Charlie, like they were scooting, they weren't you know, paying attention to anything, and Charlie happened to look out and see me freaking out in the water and pointed it out to Jeff. So they came over and he yanked me out of the water. So who knows what would have happened if it weren't for Charlie. My arms and I had a long sleeve rash guard on and this arm was kind of torn up, but the left arm was completely shredded. And I looked through the hole in my right arm and saw blood and thought, okay. And then this one, nothing. The right arm, we could see like, you know, fat cells and stuff. So I thought, all right, I'm gonna need, or fatty tissue, I guess. I'm gonna need stitches. And it, by this point, Bill and his dinghy had showed up, which was the fastest dinghy that we had with us. So they said, do you wanna be in a movie? And we thought, 
yeah, we want to be in a movie. So here we are. I'm Bill. I'm a boat captain. I'm Natalie. I have uh, 25 years experience as a firefighter paramedic. We looked over and saw Jeff being pulled into a dinghy. He didn't then sit up in the dinghy, which then we realized something serious had happened. So we upped our anchor, zipped over there, and saw what had happened. I told Brandon to get on the radio to Natalie and have the first aid kit ready. So he was like, jump in, I'll, uh, I'll bring you back to the boat with Natalie, who's got a whole hospital on board. Uh, I was back on the boat with our daughter doing homeschooling, and we got a call in the VHF from Brandon saying, get your first aid kit out. Um, Jeff is okay, but he got bit by a shark. I heard the radio call go out that there had been an injury. I heard uh, it was a little garbled. Our VHF wasn't great. And I heard that it was Jeff that was injured, but that everything was okay. So I wasn't worried. Um, got over to Eco and saw that he was coming off of the dinghy holding his arm. I went downstairs, got the first aid kit out, and just took a bunch of stuff out, not knowing what to expect. Jeff came off the dinghy and he just had his hand over his shoulder, like it was no big deal. And he was like, ah, it's no big deal, guys. And he walks up to our boat and Rob, uh, happened to be on our boat from Exodus. <clears throat> he came over and uh, I had Rob clean out Jeff's wound with some iodine off the back of the boat, off the sugar scoop, um, laid him down and Rob and I tried to stop the bleeding and clean up the wound as best we could and I have in our first aid kit zip tie stitches. The problem was there was multiple lacerations all in a row so that it wasn't a wound that could just be held closed and zip tied. Right. So we wound up calling Amber over and Amber had stitches, uh, sutures I should say. Um, so she came over and none of us have any experience really with suturing. Being a first responder you know, we just get people to the hospital and just stabilize them. She came over and we all three put our heads together and tried to suture Jeff up the best we could. So immediately I'm thinking, great, we're not near medical facilities. And I start thinking about Stella, our daughter, and, you know, how am I going to stay calm for her? So I just treat it the way I treat anything else that I'm uncomfortable with and laugh and ask him, you know, what he was thinking and what did he do to the shark to deserve it? I don't know what to do. I, this is my husband. Like I should be the one helping him. So I wash my hands and say, I'm ready to go. Um, but I obviously have no medical training or any sort of medical background. I saw Bill handing Rachel a beer saying, uh, here, this will help. Bill handed me a beer, and what else was I supposed to do? So I just drank the beer. And I remember looking around and seeing that our boat was entirely full, and everybody was on our boat. We turned the whole environment into a surgical party. We, I asked Jeff what kind of music he wanted, what kind of playlist, so he was comfortable while he was being operated on. Everybody had drinks. Everybody was, I mean, there was kids running around the whole boat. There were adults, adulting, oh, and then I was just back into Jeff's arm and doing and doing that. Well, it didn't hurt. Um, I guess it was in a part of the arm where there's probably not very many nerves or anything like that, which is probably owes to why I didn't really feel any cuts or anything from when the actual uh, biting happened. And um, just lay there and hung out and got stitched up over the course of maybe an hour or something like that. In the end, it took about three hours to do these sutures, and it felt like 20 minutes. All three of you said, 
How long did that take? It was about 20 minutes, right? And, and it was... It was three, three hours. Yeah, it was crazy. That was a really cool experience because everybody just came together. I mean, there was like the very professional response from Amber and Natalie and Rob. They're coming together. They're working out a, a plan of action and then executing. And that was great and incredibly reassuring to be in a group of people where you've got that kind of expertise and just level-headedness. Um, that's great. But it was also a blast to have 25 people sitting on the back of a catamaran, drinking beers and listening to music while Jeff is getting, is, is undergoing surgery. It was just such a strange experience, but really fun and just uh, totally sold me on the buddy boating concept. Like I'd never really been interested prior to that, but at that point I was like, not only would this have been really bad if Slacker had been out there solo, but it also just the social aspect, just it's so fun to just be with a group of people and experience trials and tribulations together. I could not have been more grateful. I was just laying there, just the happiest I've ever been. Honestly, it's, it seems so counterintuitive, but just, just amazed at how lucky I was that everyone was there um, to help me out. Sorry. He didn't pay his shark tax, so the shark was out. He took a tax. He paid enough tax oh for the rest of our life. Ready? One, two, three, go. Oh, that's good. That's How many stitches did he get? That's good stuff. How many what? Stitches. Oh, stitches. I know, they're not good. We can't count they them. They can't even count them because they're all, <laughs> it's more of a cross stitch. It's, it's kind of like a whole mac. That was so good, you guys. That, oh my God. We have big, 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 big. Wow, you're going to have the coolest you know, stars. You know what the original pictures actually <laughs> reminded me of? It was Jurassic Park. That little yeah. small yeah. thing response. Yeah. How many times have you done that, Amber? Oh, I've only watched it. She's never done it. You thought she's done it. None of us have ever done it. Yes, she's done it. I thought you two had seen it. But didn't do it. Wait, you guys have never done a suture before? Yeah. <laughs> so after we sutured him up and everybody left our boat, I had some IV antibiotics that one of my coworkers gave me before I left. And I called um, two of the ER doctors that I used to drop patients off at the hospital and, and I'm still good friends with. And um, the craziest thing about the antibiotics was. They, there was not enough for a full course. So we were in a part of the Bahamas, not far from Cuba, miles from anywhere where we could get pharmaceutical, anything, any, any prescription <clears throat> filled. And there was one other boat. I told Jaden to dinghy over to them on uh, the beach. They were walking on the beach. They were walking on the beach. <laughs> so Jaden, one of the kids from... One of the other boats dingied over there and stopped these two and said, you wouldn't happen to have a course of Catholics, would you? And they said, yes, we do. So that, I think, was the luckiest thing in all of this. The chances of somebody having a course of antibiotics that could finish his round. Right. So, so I was basically on the horn with... The ER docs every day it was what's happening. Them pictures of Jeff's arm. We wrapped it. We put Neosporin on it. Um, we drew with a marker around it to make sure that it wasn't getting infected, um, which it didn't. It looked amazing. We're glad that uh, Jeff is such a rock star, and and we're sorry that um, he had to stay out of the water. He was miserable out of the water for like that ten, 10 days. days that he couldn't go in the water, but um, you know. He didn't have no nothing for pain, and he just sat there, and he was like, yeah, whatever you guys got to do, I'm good. I'm good. And uh, total rock star. He's amazing. And Rachel handled it, I mean, just so well. They were just so put together and didn't lose it whatsoever. How did our spearfishing activities change in regards to sharks? We started becoming a lot more vigilant about staying with a buddy at all times. Um, generally, if we saw sharks in the water, wasn't necessarily an absolute end to the spearfishing trip, but uh, 
I think on most occasions thereafter, that was when we realized it was time to start wrapping it up. We also started utilizing roving dinghies a bit more, which was really nice if you had one person stay in a dinghy and they could just tool around. Because people start spreading out pretty far when you've got 10 people in the water, you know, there might be several hundred yards between the groups. But if you've got one person standing up in a dinghy looking around and can see if someone comes out of the water with a fish uh, and can run over there and grab them, that really reduces the amount of time that the fish is flapping around and bloodying up the water. The possibility, um, I'm still not exactly sure if I would do anything different than Jeff did in, in the actual event of a curious shark. You know, try to stick him, punch him, whatever, throw the fish at him, but if they're if they've already committed to the the attack, I, I mean, what are you really going to do? I haven't spearfished with any sharks around. Um, we were, I was with Will actually in the Acklands, and he, we were swimming around, and I, I had caught a fish maybe that day. I don't remember. Um, I definitely caught some fish. I think since that happened, but we were swimming around, and he gave me the the shark sign, and I was out of the water, and um then we he got out of the water too and was like i don't see it anymore so i think I, I jumped back in and then he said he saw it again so i jumped back out anyway i haven't seen one and i do at that point i did think well let me get in the water with the shark just to see how i feel and everything like that and when i did try to slip back in it wasn't around so i still haven't been in the water and seen sharks i don't know how it's going to be next season i've definitely i don't like wake up in the middle of the night thinking about it but I do find myself randomly thinking, not about like the attack as it happened, but like how stupid everything I did was by being too far away and fishing when I knew there were sharks around and having a nasty, bloody uh, rash guard that um, I never washed. You know, the black tips um, probably can do a ton of harm to people, but I don't think they're the real like people that are the sharks that wind up killing everybody. It's the bull sharks. And we had seen bull sharks in that area before. So, I mean, I, I find myself wondering like, you know, what if that reef shark had left me alone and I'd gotten halfway back and a bull shark was in there looking for some food or something like that. So that's the kind of stuff I think twice about. So I think we'll definitely be doing the, uh, the chauffeur method of spearfishing next season where one person's in the dinghy right you know right on top of or right next to everyone that they can you know get the fish out of the water quick and um get the uh the people out of the water if a shark or anything like that shows up on the side of of safety there's plenty of things out there on the internet where you can dive and spear safely my recommendation is to always dive with somebody and have them on the surface as you're going down so if you do hit a fish and the shark comes in then they have their spear at the ready to poke the shark away right and that's basically it i mean that's the most basic safety advice i can give yeah and for for me on my end um i got a suture practice kit, got some practice sutures. I re uh, recorded on my my phone, the screen recording, how to do different sutures. So where we were at, there was minimal, minimal internet and we could barely get WhatsApp. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely upped my medical kit. I got a lot of uh, pain medicine. I got a lot more uh, just in general, medications. I mean, all kinds of stuff that I have now. So now I'm ready. I, I feel I feel like I have an entire rescue worth of stuff that's weighing our boat down. Just want to say we're already in the Bahamas. It's it's the next season, and we're waiting for our whole group to get down so we can uh, live some more adventures. And looking forward to seeing you all. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers that. Just looking back on the experience, just so much love for everybody that helped us through that. And now we have a great story to tell.